Welcome, Spark. So what kind of Spark are you? A player? Creator? Or both? The stories yet to be told. The games to be made. Civilizations and societies to be formed. The universe is waiting for you to bring it to life. Now, how do we begin? And hey there, guys. Hello, everyone. Welcome to a new Tuesday education stream. You have uh, Spark Brian here. And Spark Zach. And what are we going to be talking about today, Zach? Today, we are going to be talking about the ins and outs of champions. Cool. How to uh, put them into your game. So, yeah, so Project Spark has all these champions, five of them right now. Um, and you... You're, so you're going to show us how to actually go into these champions and kind of push brains into them, modify them so they can right. do new things. So let me go over uh, champions a little bit here. Champions are uh, these kind of, uh, I want to say, player-like objects. Um, they're kind of like your default player, but they have a little more pizzazz to them. Um, they have some interesting uh, abilities that you can unlock. You s keep the same champion level as you go through each, um, like through each level, right? Uh, or through everyone else's worlds, your champion level stays the same. Meaning, if you level up your champion to five in Crossroads, you can take that into someone you someone else's UGC, and your champion level will still be five. So it's kind of like this avatar that you uh, carry around with you in Project Spark. And like Brian said, right now we have five of them. But placing these guys uh, in a level in Project Spark is a little different um, than your kind of default uh, player. Um, and how that's different is you cannot actually access their brain um, in create mode, which we're kind of in here. You see Brian laying down a biome uh, brush. Yeah, and soon I'm going to ask you what setting you want me to kind of set up for you. So you want to talk about sort of the, the main reasoning for why uh, players currently don't have that full access to champion brains? Well, I mean, obviously the main reason is uh, champions do level up uh, when playing things like, uh, you know, um, Crossroads. Um, and uh, Champions and Quest. And Champions Quest. So we don't want people to be able to access their XP, getting their XP, receiving their XP. Um, yeah, and the other important thing is they're also tied to achievements. Exactly. So uh, if we did open up the hood completely on champions, uh, then it would be as simple as kind of changing a few things in their brain, and then you can unlock a bunch of achievements. So it's it's, it's sort of a scary amount reasons. of achievements. Possibly all of them. I'm not sure. No, no, no not majority, all of them. Majority, majority. <laughs> oh, it is a U-shaped force. God, I didn't even realize. Um, so what's the setting that you're thinking of? What's, what's our champion going to be doing uh, in this tutorial? So I think I was going to use uh, Seth. He's going to be, um, he's our wizard champion, and he's going to be maybe uh, checking out a new jump skill that we're going to teach him. Um, so we'll need a few goblins, but a relatively safe distance away. And okay. the forest sounds good as anything. Yeah, and I'm thinking of doing kind of, uh, so I'm kind of constraining it into uh, this little clearing right here. And so then one interesting thing you can kind of show off, which I think um, I think doesn't happen quite enough, right? Is what if you just kind of noised up um, and roughened up everything else that we're not going to be fighting on? Oh yeah, definitely. So this is one thing that um, Steve O and Claude, our champion guys, are really a huge fan of, is using the plateau brush. But let's give a kind of demo of like what the perfect use for a plateau brush really, really is here. And first, so one thing I always, I also always love to do is uh, when you have a bunch of trees, yeah. you bring in this dirt path, um, and this kind of helps outline sort of what you're working with. Mm -hmm. uh, it's probably a bit too much, um, but really, in every one of your games, you should have some form of a path. Oh, absolutely. For sure. um, you need to have basically, you need to show people where to go. So it's going to be here, and maybe we'll have all the goblins sort of at this end point right here. I can live with that. Uh, let's bring them over here. Okay. And, yeah, so sharpen and roughen, I love to use those as well. Uh, sorry, smoothen and roughen, I love to use those. 
uh, kind of go back and forth between them. So you first start with roughening stuff, uh, and then you kind of smoothen it down. Um, it's usually actually better, though, when you actually add some depth first. So I'm actually going to use the Expand tool to cool. begin with. Um, and so let me kind of go through uh, champions and what I mean by you can't access their brain while in uh, create mode here. So uh, that means, it does not mean that you cannot access their brain. It just can't be going into the brain editor and changing tiles around uh, in code. Um, but you can, at runtime, do a lot of different stuff. And that's kind of what we're going to uh, be going over. You can kind of think of champions having uh, a brain um, that's essentially just like a normal player um, once, you, once you put them in the world. There are a few rules I kind of want to show you guys while we go over uh, this today. Um, and hopefully that'll kind of, there's a little mystery uh, as to what exactly can happen. Um, in terms of like camera stuff and uh, input, and that's what we really want to uh, oops hammer down on today's stream. Sorry, change up the brightness here. <clears throat> yeah, so the um, thing about champions is while you can't go into their direct brain, uh, that we're not limiting what you can do with champions. You can do a lot with them, uh, as we're going to show you. It's just um, you can't actually see what the brain is we currently use for them because of all the issues you can do with unlocking challenges and, and uh, achievements. But you can push things into them and, and really change up how they work. And now let's finally use this smooth and roughen tool to rough things up. Cool. And now we see we get these really cool kind of hilly things popping up here. and. Uh, you're getting a lot of depth. You know where you're supposed to be, so to speak, and where you're not supposed to be. And that's really, really important, especially in these uh, third-person adventure games. Uh, three dimensions is a lot to move around in, Brian. Mm -hmm. And uh, having some, I guess we could call them uh, draws or focal points for your eye definitely helps you navigate where you're supposed to be going. So while you're creating games, something to think about. Uh, so you want me to add, go ahead and add in a champion here? Let's do it. All right, so you want me to bring in Seth? That sounds great. Um, so, yeah, so we have basically how we kind of bring the champions is uh, through these champion uh, pickers. Uh, and then that kind of just basically these champion pickers create a champion and then, then they destroy themselves. So let's bring Seth in here. We can get rid of this guy. And then I think just go to test. And you got Seth. Indeed. Um, all right, so what's the first thing? I think this is prettied up enough for you to kind of get in here and start working around with it. Okay. So I'm going to switch over to you, and you talk about kind of the first thing that you want to do with changing around champion. OK, so here's where it starts, guys. Um, first thing we're going to go over is uh, creation. Just the simple idea of how champions get created, default, and we're going to work off this. Um, so let's open up this brain. This is about, this is all the interaction we're really going to be doing with the actual brain on the ch champion object today. Um, so we say uh, player side the left stick. We don't really care about this. Um, global champion destroy. I don't really care. That means we're destroying any other champions that uh, exist because they're all working off this variable. We can leave that in here. I'm not super interested. So what this does here is it creates Ceph somehow. This is the first frame of the game, right? And it if uh, if it doesn't exist, then it's destroying itself. Or if there is a global champion already, it's destroying that champion because we only want one. So uh, what we're going to do is simply say when uh, a, well, let's not do a. Let's do a relatively unused key. Let's say. Oh, yeah. You and your typing. I'm going to move the mic. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Oh, I should stop pressing enter when I go into create a key. Create a key. And we'll say L, pretty lonely key. Let's use that. So we'll say when L is pressed, we're going to 
set the global uh, variable champion to Seth. We're going to create them at the same time. So we'll do this. We'll say we have our camera in our default position. And we'll press L, and we snap to Seth. We can get so far. Um, and so that's kind of what you want to do. You can uh, you can change this around in a few different ways, uh, but for the sake of this tutorial, we're gonna keep it here. You could at the same time set different variables. Um, you could say global right under here if you wanted to save something from Seth's position or whatever. But we'll skip that, and we're gonna move on to input. So here's one of the big interesting things that's different between a normal character and a champion. A normal character's input uh, happens every frame uh, regardless of what else is being called. Um, so that means if you have A pressed somewhere, your champion will, or your normal player will move to the left if you're using WASD, and whatever happens when you press A will happen at the same time. Um, so let me give you an example of this. Let's drop this sword in, um, and we're going to change it around a little bit. The main difference uh, between what I just described to champions is that their input is overridden by other calls to the uh, button that's being pressed. So uh, I like its appearance. So let's go into physics. Let's turn its collidable off, and we'll make it fixed so it won't move around uh, due to gravity. We'll scale this guy up. And uh, first, we'll just play. We'll hit L to spawn our champion. And we'll look at this big old floating sword. I don't really want to equip it, so I'm not that interested. But we're moving around. I'm using WASD at the moment. And uh, that's going to change uh, pretty quickly. So we go in here. Um, I open up this uh, sword. I remove its brain. and. Instead of its normal equipped brain, which means if we walk up to it and try to interact with it, we receive it, I'm going to say well, when A, the key, is just held down, um, I want to hologram. And that just means I'm going to be bright and shiny. Um, and what this is, does is it makes it so Seth can no longer walk left. Since I have a call to the A key being pressed, um, Seth's A input is now overridden. This is true of all champions, not just Seth, obviously. But um, this is me pressing A. You can see that our sword is kind of turning on and off, but you will not be able to move the champion at the same time. So if you set something in your world, say, like the character next to the champion, and when you use the left stick to move around, that means the champion will no longer move. That will move? Yes. Okay. okay. So every t basically every time you put in a button input, it removes and overwrites that button input from the champion, so they no longer do that thing. Right. Cool. It's almost like um, champions are incredibly jealous. If you're not only going to use their input for what they want to do, then they're not interested. Right. It's either them or nothing. Um, they don't want you to use their input for anything else, so they just get completely uninterested in you. <coughs> so now that we have that in mind, um, let's remove this guy. Well, it's also uh, interesting to note, I'll add in another thing. Um, I'll say when, uh, yeah, let's do when enter, return here. Return is pressed. We'll just destroy this sword. So, I press L to create our champion. I'm pressing A, I can't move. But when I press return and it's destroyed, I get my A button back. Mm, okay. So uh, you can remove that input uh, while you're playing, and then you can move the champion just like you could uh, before. So it seems like you do like a really simple cinematic in your world where you just have some sort of object. Like when you have a cinematic with a champion, mm. just have some sort of object where you put when you're using the left stick, nothing happens. Right. Uh, and then that object is created when you're doing the cinematics, so your champion can't move. And then as soon as the cinematic's done, you delete that object, and the champion can move again. Right, exactly. Cool. Okay, so right, and that brings up another point I wanted to get to is you never want to destroy everything on the brain of the champion because that's not going to be great. So pushing uh, brains isn't great, and trying to disable the brain might not work as well as you want. Which uh, kind of brings us to our next point. Um, Seth has, I would argue, probably the most awesome moves of any champion. Um, I really like his jump, 
jump attack. But uh, if we wanted to change it, as cool as it is, uh, I'm going to go over and do a quick tutorial on how to teach Seth a new jump in the air. Oh, yeah. Brodin Woozy brings up an interesting point, a good point of you can you can really simply do this to make it uh, make a 2D side scroller with champions. Oh, yes, incredible. That might be part of this tutorial, Brody. <laughs> oh, we jumped ahead of ourselves. <laughs> you might you might see exactly how to do that. Okay. Um, so here we go. We're going to teach Seth a new jump. Um, so I'm going to open a logic cube here, and we're going to in this logic cube save a brain. So we'll go over how to save a brain here as well. If you guys aren't incredibly, uh, uh, if you don't, if you aren't quite familiar. So when global champion, because remember we set global champion in this brain over here, right? Whenever we call global champion, we're calling the Seth we cr we've created. Okay. So uh, global champion. Uh, let's see, jumping. Um, so when he's jumping, and we press, uh, let's see, right mouse button, right? Then we can uh, now do something. If we just say some, if we just say this, um, what will happen is we still have our default uh, guy here, but. Uh, if we wanted to add this brain onto our champion, uh, that would, if we put something in the do here, it'll override. So what we'll do is global champion, uh, it might be is jumping actually. No, it's just jumping. Oh, right. um, and the right mouse button is pressed. We want to uh, set a boolean. So we'll say do over here. Um, I'm going to make a new boolean, and this will be kind of what drives the next couple of actions. We'll say ice uh, wave. So ice wave. Uh, and we'll set ice wave equals. So this will be Seth's new skill. So when ice wave, uh, that means when ice wave is equal to true. It's the same thing as saying equal to and then true. <coughs> and again, that's uh, these two things are the same. Uh, we'll say first we'll put, we'll insert some uh, code in here, copy pasta that a little bit, and uh, he down here we'll add a timer, and we want this to maybe be about one second. So what we'll do is paste. And we'll say equals, and we'll say uh, one point, and I like the idea of maybe three. So we're setting our pace to 1.3 while in air because we're going to kind of be gathering up uh, stuff. And we'll also highlight blue. So now Seth will be highlighted blue, and we'll say. Um, all objects or no, we start here. Uh, -T. Uh, what we'll do we'll do this. It's when distance to say greater than or less than. So in this case, who is it? I believe it will be any object we call. Okay. So we're about to, we're just going to kind of freeze everything. Less than or equal to, and we'll say four meters. That sounds good. Maybe we'll push it up to 10. Um, we'll insert some things here. We'll push brain. Or no, we don't want to push, we want to add brain. So what adding a brain does to an object is it kind of gives it some more code at the end of its like page that's running. You can think of it as just adding stuff here. 
Uh, we have a brain gallery, which I'm going to use here. Um, we'll go to objects, gallery picker. And I am looking for the debuff freeze. Um, and we're going to call it on it. Uh, there you go. So what we're going to do here is when we're jumping, we press the right mouse button, ice wave is going to be equal to true. While ice wave is equal to true, our pace is going to be 0 0.3. We're going to highlight blue and our distance is less than equal distance to it. This might have to be all objects. Or maybe even better, we could do enemies. So anything that's not part of our team is an enemy. <coughs> less than or equal to two, it add brain freezing to buff. And after a countdown timer of one, we're just going to undo a lot of this stuff. Um, we're going to set our pace back to normal. And we're going to set the Boolean back. So this, you can kind of think of this as a duration timer a little bit, a little easier, but just while this is equal, um, then after one started two, we're going to set, um, going to set uh, ice wave equal to false meaning that all of our stuff uh, above here is not going to run. Um, and we're going to set um, pace uh, back to one, which is the default. And we're going to uh, not highlight blue anymore. Uh, I think that's just highlight equals false. I could be wrong. I could also put a strength to zero. Or you could just do, uh, what's when is it highlighting blue? Uh, the character. OK, you don't need to put anything. It only highlights blue when ice wave is true. OK, I'm down. Um, that should be good. So this is Seth's kind of new jump. So and we don't need global champion here, because we'll be pushing this brain, or adding this brain to our champion. So, um, when jumping, ice wave blue equals true. We're also going to do, we're going to put one thing here. Um, we're just going to put some kind of null statement. We always want Seth to be visibility be equal to true while he's jumping. So, we'll set. Oh, right, because sometimes he can blink around and yeah. become invisible. So now we're going to, excuse me, go into the brain editor again. Um, and we're going to save this brain. And we'll save this brain as Ice Wave. Um, and that's an okay screenshot. I'm okay with that. Okay. Now, we're going to add um, some code to a logic cube here, different logic cube. And we're going to say when, uh, I like using numbers, so one on the top of our keyboard is pressed. Um, we're going to global champion. And then we will add brain. And then we're going to find our brain again. So we'll go into uh, objects, gallery picker. And we'll look for our lovely, beautiful screenshot, ice wave right here. Um, there we go. So if we hook this all up right, we're about to find out. Spawn with L. Um, right now I should have my normal jump. And then once I uh, change here, oh, it looks like we may have, there we go. You see my pace has kind of changed a little bit. Our visibility is equal to true. Um, and now we should have, oh, all these goblins are so weak. <laughs> Poor guys. Um, you can see how we're overriding some of the stuff. We're no longer blinking out. Um, <coughs> excuse me. We're no longer blinking out of existence for that second. Uh, we're setting our pace. We're um, 
adding our brains, and we're kind of slowly overriding all of these jump mechanics that we see. Uh, and let me go into this guy's properties. Uh, we'll go into combat here, and we'll go into health. And we'll have his starting health be quite a bit more something manageable still. And the more things we add to this brain, uh, the less we can uh, make it look like the champion skill and the more we can kind of customize it. Um, so I guess that's a pretty good start. So does he, does his face change? You can see, oh, ah, I have to press one. Let's see. I see, I see my face changing. He might not be part of my <laughs> enemies. Uh, yeah, so I think I know what you need to do with that brain. I think you had it, I think you just need to look for all objects. Yeah, instead of enemies. Indeed. Okay, so we'll open up this guy. We'll go to uh, our brain gallery. And we will go to Ice Wave. And then under Ice Wave, uh, we'll be going to, instead of enemies, uh, we'll be doing all objects. Okay, and let's make this something easy. Or you can just do distance to glo the global champion's enemies. Because it doesn't currently know who the enemies are. Yeah. Either one. All objects. I like the idea of freezing trees. Oh, I need to resave this brain. A good little important note here. So we'll go back, uh, save brain. Save it again. Override that guy. And then we'll get rid of him. And that should have uh, worked. Okay, so I'll just spawn our champion. We have our normal jump now. We see how we're not being highlighted blue. Our pace is not changing for Seth. Um, well, we'll change that by pressing one. And now we'll walk over to this goblin. Uh, and you can see how we're, our pace is slowing down. Uh, and let's see. Oh, we're going to use a, a different sensor then uh, instead of distance two. Uh, here we go. We'll open up our logic cube one more time. Go into our brain editor. Use our brain gallery. Go to ice wave. And instead of doing distance to ob all objects, we'll just say uh, detect. Um, so that should return uh, all objects in which we detect. It's a fear shape sensor <laughs> volume that lets this object know when and where objects are in. Or you could simply do the look at the nearest object so it understands what it is. Um, oh. There we go. Them add brain. Um, this should be much better. So we'll save that brain again. This reminds me, we're about to be publishing a tutorial on brains, so a lot of uh, put written down in text, which will be quite nice, because um, there are a lot of notes and a lot of little uh, nuances on how to use these things. Okay, so <coughs> we'll press one to get my jump back. That looks interesting. <laughs> You're, uh, it's now... It's adding... Uh, the debuff brain to all of the objects I have on as well. Yeah, exactly. So we're adding. So all of your effects are now have a pace of zero. <laughs> it's pretty cool though. So now <laughs> you can see I'm freezing these trees and I'm freezing all this stuff around me. And uh, Seth now has a new skill for his jump. So <laughs> there you go. Um, and you can add different skills. We could change this to it, really anything else we wanted to. Um, you can make all these stuff, all this stuff on fire if you'd like. I just kind of use the default uh, freeze brain, which makes all these guys uh, slow down. Obviously, objects that uh, don't move. We'll have to see on blow come back to this goblin. Yeah, and he's now slower. He's walking around slower. He's highlighted blue, much like myself. All of my weapons, all of this awesome stuff I'm wearing, also is slower. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, but that's that's kind of how you do it here, and you can change that. Um, 
and you can keep kind of adding to those things. And uh, so, say I want to change the, uh, the camera. Yes. On the exactly. camera, how would I do that? So now we're going to kind of move out from how to override um, the skills of the champions, and we're going to go into how to change the camera around. Because a lot of things that people talk about is they have a little, uh, they have a hard time figuring out how. Um, <laughs> Look at how slowly camera. the trees were walking. <laughs> Incredibly slowly. Um, so we'll have our camera here. Uh, and I'm just going to add another camera for prettiness. We'll say this. This is a cool little trick. Let's set the camera here. Um, when? Once. So just for one frame. First person camera. Um, and then uh, destroy. So all that'll do is when we start and we don't have any camera set, uh, it'll kind of give us the camera for a second. Oh, oh I'll get extremely angry. Uh -oh. Did you crash it? No! <laughs> <laughs> it's perfectly fine. Um, you want to throw up the other the camera with our big big talking heads? No, this is funny. I, I we should we should see what happens when when you uh, when you crash. <laughs> oh no! This is why autosaves are nice, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let me get back in here. We'll see how much of our uh, uh, thing we still have, of our project is still kind of intact. Our unnamed project, one minute ago. Oh, lovely. Oh, we don't want to play it. That's OK. Let's see if you can crash it again. Great. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Fair. <laughs> okay. So let's 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 see what you did with the uh, the pushing of the camera brain. <clears throat> right. Did you only push it once, or did you? Is it no? This is actually a completely different problem. I was trying. I was trying to showboat. And it turned out. Uh, you just showboated it too well. I showboated too well. <laughs> okay. Here we go. So what not to do? I found out something new. What not to do is destroy something the first time you call once. I'm changing the camera. So we're changing the timer. And we're going to say like 0 0.15. Okay. We'll save this so we don't lose our progress. That's a lovely name. <coughs> okay. So you have just another object in the world, and you set a camera in that, and that overrides the camera of uh, of the default camera that you kind of get, right? Because we got it. Having so that's an easy way to set like a camera before you want to do something. Um, now moving on to what we were actually wanted to look at is setting a camera uh, for a champion. So let's set a camera for a champion. So the first thing we want to do is say when uh, global. Uh, champ, right? Uh, and we'll say not, not equal to nothing. That would be lame. So pretty much, we make sure that there's a global champion somewhere in the world. Mm -hmm. um, and fix this a couple times. Uh, what we'll do then is we'll say now. I want to take. Uh, I want to be a first-person camera, modifiers without controls, and then I'll say I also want to do global. Or uh, I want my position. So this is the camera. I want my position um, x. Uh, move this cursor over here to equal uh, global champ uh, position. X, which means we're going to kind of mirror its position in X, and we're going to do this three more times. Uh, if you guys are familiar with code, you're familiar with what I'm about to do. Um, so then we'll do the same thing in Z. <coughs> okay, so you're basically we'll making the, the camera thing. so that its position is always going to be at the same position as your champion. Right, and then... Although, do you want... Right, we also want to do offsets as well. Right. So back and forth, we want to plus, which is going to be backwards. Uh, don't think about it too much. Uh, plus, and we'll say four, and y, we'll plus a healthy amount. Uh, we'll say, well, six is good. 
And then uh, that'll be I'll be okay for right now. So um, when champion is not equal, we're going to push this gamma. This isn't going to be great. So this is where we kind of get a little problem. That seems like it would intuitively work. So I spawned my champion. Unfortunately, we kind of have that camera because we didn't start back here. So we were in, in that camera for a little bit, right? It said, oh, there's a camera here. And then quickly said, oh, but I don't want that camera. I want the champion camera. Well, the champion camera kind of is deaf as soon as it gets created for a second. It wants to be overridden, but it doesn't. its hearing kind of sucks uh, for the first uh, half second it's created. So, what we're going to add is we're going to say uh, when and we're going to do timer, countdown timer, and it can be extremely short. We're going to say five. And we're going to say in frames, um, and that's all we want. So all we do is wait for five frames. There's 30 frames a second, not a very long time, but if you just wait for five frames. And you let that camera, that champion camera, exist and get set up. And it takes about, I think it's like three to five frames. Don't do not do one frame, it doesn't work. Uh, then it should override uh, very well. And we did not tilt our camera. Uh, but you can see we do have a new camera. But since it is top down, we have to kind of rotate it like that. And we have our new camera um, for Seth. So that's kind of how you set new cameras for champions. Uh, you have to wait a second before you start them. Um, but like I said, a very, very, very short amount of time. Uh, just a quick number of frames. That's the equivalent of, what, one sixth of a yep. second? <coughs> so not a ton of uh, time. Um, Oh, this guy is uh, rotations. Interesting, isn't it? That's why I'm confused. Well, I think you also, if you want to do a real top down camera, you really want the Y position of that to be even higher. Oh, yes. Yeah, this is kind of our, uh, it's kind of a follow cam -y kind of thing. Um, and we're kind of rotated weird, which is why uh, Seth's a little off center. Yeah, I actually find um, here's like a quick pro tip with using cameras. Um, I found that things tend to look. Uh, a bit more natural when instead of manually tilting something down, you actually do look at target and oh you yeah. set a target because then it's um, it's not looking at the rotation of the camera you're using. It's actually just looking at <coughs> where you want it to look on the screen. So the rotation of the camera is a bit more natural, especially when you're turning around corners, things like that, because uh, when you're turning around a corner, sometimes the rotation of the camera, if it's rotated weird, if it's not flat, it might change. Right. <coughs> Um, so let me think about uh, something else we can do here. So that's kind of our top-down cam. And my next note, how are we doing on time? Uh, we got 17 minutes. 17 minutes in, right? Nope. Oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Well, let's see. Let's go over uh, 2D movement. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, I don't think you need to... Right. Show the other stuff. No, I don't think. Uh, I was going to do a little quick on how to do power ups, but you can kind of see how we change our jump around is kind of how you do power ups as well, just for a certain amount of time. Um, so, what I'll do here is I will very quickly make this a 2D side scroller. Um, we can get rid of this camera that we slaved over. Goodbye. Um, and create a new one. And I don't know if this is going to be incredibly conducive. Let's see. We're going to we're going to mess with this just a little bit. Uh, and we're going to add some terrain here. Oh. Uh, I don't know if I want that much terrain. Let's do expand. Expand this guy so he goes a little further up since we're going to be in... Uh, plane very soon. Okay, and I'll kind of grab my objects here. Where did my goblin go? There he is. We don't want the goblin who's under the ground. So we'll grab him, put him up on top of this hill, and we'll do the same for our champion. Move him up on top of our hill. And uh, we'll do the same thing of since we want this to be a nice play, uh, playable area, always, you know, just plateau. 
I think you had the goblin again. Oh, really? Oh, sunk down. Get him back. Okay. And we want. Where's our camp? This is our kind of start camp. Let's move it someplace that would make a little more sense. Don't want to just be staring at a wall. Okay. So, we have our 2D camera. What we're going to do is something very similar to what we did here. Um, so this will be our 2D camera for Seth. Again, we're going to start with uh, when global, and then we'll say champion. Uh, and we'll say not equal uh, to nothing. Uh, we're going to, again, add our uh, kind of delay. So. Uh, We'll grab a countdown timer, we'll wait five, and in frames, so the default is seconds. We'll add a couple more things here. And we'll say, again, this will be a first person camera with the stipulation that it has no controls, meaning you cannot move it with the mouse. And then we'll say, we'll take the global position again. Our uh, global, our art position, so we just take the normal position, uh, and X is going to equal the global champion. Uh, oh, cursor, you betrayed me. X. I'm going to do that a couple more times. And we are going to use these kind of blank tiles here. Uh, there we go. So we'll do that in Y again. And we'll do that in Z again. <coughs> and we'll change these bits too. Z here. And Y here. Y will add a plus and we'll say 2. And I think for X we want to add, I say, around like, uh, I don't know. We'll start with 10. We'll do a wide screen. Okay. Do we want it to be looking at the champion too, or else it might just be looking forward? Um, it should be, it, it's based on how it's rotated. So I just need to make sure this guy's rotated uh, well. We'll do this. Nice snapped uh, rotation, and that should be okay. Uh, now to make it, uh, this is very similar to the camera we just had. To make it 2D, we're going to do two different things. We're going to say, um, when as soon as we started and set a global champion, we're going to say global champion. Oh no, we don't want to win. On this side, we just want started. So the first frame, that's true, right? We're going to say, um, we're going to make a new number value, number, new number, and we're going to call this our lock access. If you've seen the 2D tutorial, you kind of know where I'm going uh, with this. We say equals, um, and we'll say. Uh, global champion. I believe we want X. Position X. X. Um, and so every frame that that's, every frame that after that, we know exactly the place he started in X. Every frame after that, we want him to stay there. So we just say um, our global champion. Uh, position is going to equal lock access. It means it's always going to equal that thing that we uh, set looked at in the first frame. And we want to insert here x. There you go. Two more things, and this kind of gets to the what we were talking about, uh, what chat was talking about. Um, when w and when s. That means that well, let's first not have these guys. L to spawn, and we have our nice 2D side scroller. Unfortunately, when we go back and forward, while we're not moving in this X axis, uh, we do have a slight problem that Seth is still trying to move in that axis. So we can override that input incredibly easy by simply going into the camera and saying uh, when W and when S. 
which is for a keyboard user like me, back and forth. So that means that those will no longer happen because we've overridden them and Seth is no longer, I can go back and forth between these keys and Seth is no longer trying to run at or away from the camera. So for controller you just do win left stick up and win left stick down? <coughs> exactly. Uh, and let's grab some paint here. And grab some. There we go. And I think we need Seth to start a little further over here if we don't want him to run off the edge. Um, and you can and with this, like most of our most of our uh, champion skills are intact. You can see Seth's his old natural self. He has uh, that guy or our crazy uh, <laughs> disco <laughs> new move as well. Um, and that's kind of the that's, those are the basics of setting up a champion. Um, if you guys have any like general questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, while you do that, um, I suppose I want to go over one more way to do input for champions. Um, so we can push brains like we did uh, for uh, the jump attack, but we can also change the input a little bit by putting in a longitude here. Um, so we can say uh, we can say that when space is just whenever that happens, um, we can say the object we want, which in this case is the global champ. Uh, we can say emote. I never know what to call it. It's uh, appearance, and then it's emote. Yeah, and then we'll just pick one of these emotions. To say cheer. Um, but how about we have that happen only for um, the first six seconds of the game. So what this is going to do is it means um, we kind of control when this input happens, right? Right now I can't jump because I have input saying that when I press space, this happens. But in six seconds, um, uh, something should definitely, <laughs> oh, it's, I believe it's still true because of the duration timer. You have to get rid of the call to the, uh, you have to get rid of the call. So we'll say timer. And then we'll say another six. And we'll just say destroy here. You have to destroy this call in this brain else. It gets kind of confused. <coughs> so we'll cheer. Some kind of Ola Gandalf would be awesome. He's talking about the uh, Champions Quest. There's uh, an elder of the village. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the elder of the village is just made with default props it's uh he has castle roof as a hat and then he's just a regular villager with his hair white yeah he looks pretty sick though i think he's pretty awesome is there a way to trigger champion attacks from the outside um uh if you just call attack on the champion uh it should do it so um like i'll trigger a champion attack here this is an object not on the champion, obviously. So let's say when, I'll pick another thing, two on my keyboard, and that's pressed. Um, I should just be able to say global. And then obviously I'm gonna use champion again. If you don't know where this is going. Um, uh, attack. And then I can say light. Press L. He's kind of attacking. The default attacks, um, I'm not quite sure you can call um, from that guy. And then the object's destroyed. I can only do it for the first six seconds. Hmm. There's a way. Yeah. Um, do you know the page name? Are you going to cheat? Okay. No, no. <laughs> uh, we'll have to do some fiddling, fiddling around with that. I think there is a way. Yeah? Yeah. I would say call the page name, and perhaps we could uh, we could um, put page name names a little bit of them. Well, if we the problem is also if you know the page names in the champion, then you can kind of uh, 
you can kind of assume. you can figure out which which page name deals with uh, your achievements and your challenges, and then you can call that page and just like change the heck out of that page. Yep. So yeah, it's a bit hard. Even like even giving just the page names, people could uh, could work backwards to find out which page which pages deal with uh, achievements and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's a shame. Say la vie. Uh, we could give them numbers of pages, but I don't know. That's true. We'll look into it. We'll look yeah. into it. Just like 13 or so pages. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, think, we'll think about the best way. Um, you can totally experiment by trying to have them switch pages yourself and see what happens. Absolutely. That could actually be kind of interesting. Just, um, just make it a champion, like switch to random page, like switch to page four, see what, see what happens. <laughs> It's, um, inside the champion brain, don't you tell them how to hack the game. What are you doing? <laughs> well, no, because you have to you have to change some things for things to really unlock. Um, and I think it's using lots of call pages, anyways. So a lot of stuff is already running from different pages. Yeah. Um, anywho, that's kind of uh, that's champions in a nutshell. You should be able to set one up, kind of change around its abilities now. Uh, you can hopefully know a little bit better how to instantiate a champion. Hopefully, know a little bit better how uh, their input works how to lock their accesses, what you can and cannot do with them. Um. Yeah, and I know it seems like um, for some work creators, it's, it may seem like champions might be locked. Um, there is a specific reason for why we don't just give you everything uh, on the floor, you know, achievements, challenges, but they're, they're not locked. It's just uh, you need to know the workarounds for uh, adding your own stuff into champions. So I hope this kind of helps show you that you really can by using ad brains and by, um, by changing around the keyboard inputs really Make your make the champion kind of do whatever you want in your game. You can essentially, uh, I mean, if there's something you don't like about a champion that has to do with an input, you can change it. Right, exactly. So uh, if anyone who says like, oh, well, I don't like this champion because it operates in this way, you can totally override it. Yeah, and if you ever want to make a 2D side scroller with champions or a first person shooter with champions, that could be interesting. It could like be a first, well, not a shooter, but a first person experience with champions <laughs> could be interesting. Sort of like a. Like good old Elder Scrolls, things like that. Yeah, absolutely. So I hope uh, that was useful for you guys. Um, we'll be coming out with even more of these tutorials later. Uh, yeah. We're, we're up to a few now. Uh, I think today might mark the day, or as soon as this guy gets up, once uh, Twitch and YouTube kind of communicate. Um, we might start a channel on, uh, or a uh, playlist on our YouTube channel uh, for just tutorials. Yeah, and also um, for those of you who've caught s previous weeks where I've done tutorials on how to make an RPG, um, there is now a level uploaded. It will soon be added to the starter kit. Of uh, It's called Tactical RPG Starter Kit, and um, it should be remixable for everyone. If it's not, let us know. <laughs> um, I should have removed everything in there that uses uh, uh, extra content packs. Um, but anyways, that is now live, so if you look for uh, Tactical RPG Starter Kit, you should find that and be well on your way to making a cool RPG. Cool. Uh, well, I hope you guys got uh, something out of this stream, and I uh, can't wait to do more for you guys. The next yeah. stream, well, I can't say for sure what the next stream is, but one of the next three streams, because we kind of have rotate, we're trying to get guests in here, mm -hmm. um, will be procedurally generated dungeons. Yes, how to make a random dungeon generator, basically. Yeah, I uh, can't wait to show you that. Yeah. That'll be super awesome. Um, but hopefully, I mean, I expect more champions. This was interesting, or I can't just state what I did was interesting. We <laughs> what, know how to what I did was amazing, guys. What I did was amazing, use champions, thank you. Um, <laughs> okay, well, I'll see you guys Thursday, if not sooner. Yep. See uh, you guys then. Yeah. Create your game as you play? Any spark can do it. Spark, activate the portals.